welcome everyone to our Reformation Day service. We confess our sins before God and one another. God, whose reign is just, we acknowledge that our actions and inactions have led to the oppression of our neighbors. We have willingly benefited from privileges and caused harm to others. We have failed to heed your call to lead from a place of humility and to care for our communities in a way that makes it possible for all to love. Forgive us our fear of scarcity and love of power, and keep us ever mindful of the needs of others. The reign of God has come near to you. In Jesus Christ we are reconciled to God, and therefore God forgives us all our sins. Let God guide us to work for God's justice. Amen. Amen.
by the mutual love and support we receive by your power and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Psalm 93 by Adverse Burden. The Lord is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The Lord has made the world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are the just. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mighty in the sun. Does not go so well for him. 
People are not pleased and many leave. The kingdom is in crisis. Jeroboam sees an opportunity to fracture the kingdom and gathers those unhappy to split the kingdom in two. And he becomes king of the northern kingdom. He heads north with ten of the tribes and prohibits them from returning to Jerusalem to worship. Jeroboam reintroduces the false items of idols of past generation and leads his kingdom further away from God. Many would never again worship the God of Israel. This was the beginning of the end for the United Jewish people. No longer would the 12 tribes be united as one. Despite Rehoboam's bad decision, despite his poor leadership, the southern kingdom would survive. Why? For they were able to continue to worship God in Jerusalem. They were able to stay in relationship to their God and they were not seduced by the false idols. They had the dynasty of David linking them through history. Judea would go on to have good kings and bad ones, but the remaining Jewish people would remain faithful even during the bad times and the times of exile. Following bad advice usually ends poorly, and it was disastrous for Rehoboam and Israel. When leaders are seduced by greed and power, they fail to lead wisely. This struggle of who to listen to reminds me of an old story. An old Cherokee told his grandson, My son, there is a battle between two wolves inside us all. One is evil. It is anger, jealousy, greed, resentment inferiority, lies, and ego. The other one is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, empathy, and truth. The boy thought about it and asked, Grandfather, which wolf wins? The old man quietly replied, The one you feed. Rehoboam chose to feed the evil wolf for his own personal gain, and his people suffered greatly, would tear apart the kingdom and prove to be his undoing. You see, both of our readings for today seek an answer to the question, what makes a great leader? The king thought it was by tyranny and control, domination and oppression. And he sought the counsel of the wrong people. No wonder the people revolted and his kingship was short-lived. This was not the kind of king that God wanted to rule over his people. So a new vision of leadership and power was needed. When Jesus came to earth, Jesus came to bring this new definition of a leader, although it would have taken many years. And the people had a hard time with it. They had known only kings who ruled with an iron fist, those who relied on armies and strength to get things done, those who were selfish and greedy and hungry for power. Jesus changed the image and showed a new way to lead. To lead. Instead of giving people a heavy yoke to bear, bear it for them, says Jesus. He says, whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Of course, Rehoboam never heard Jesus' words, and I doubt he would have listened to them anyway. For giving up personal power, being a slave to those who should be under you, serving others instead of being served, was not his idea of a great leader. But today, we know better. We have the benefit of hindsight. We can look back in history and see that time and time again, destruction and damage are caused by leaders who forgot who they were serving. 
Leaders more interested in their own welfare than that of their subjects. Those who got greedy and turned their backs on the people of their kingdom. Jesus would try to change all that. He would model a type of leadership that was cooperative, gentle, and humble. He was a servant leader. He would challenge his disciples to be the types of leaders who care more about the other person than they care about themselves. His challenge stands for us as we make choices, as we attempt to surround ourselves with wise counsel. And this is not always easy. It's usually very tempting and far more fun to follow the advice of those who are not so wise, those who think of themselves first and not others. But this is one of the reasons we come together in this community. We come to listen and learn and gain wisdom from the scriptures. We gather to hear stories of those who follow God's will alongside those who strayed and took the easy path away from God. We come together to help feed our good wolf, the kind, considerate, loyal, joyful wolf, the voice that leads us to serve others and follow the path that Jesus takes us down. Good choices are not easier, but much easier to do with the support of a community, with a faith that strengthens us to make wise choices. Today is Reformation Sunday, the day we remember Martin Luther and all those that started a reformation of the church as they knew it. They saw the powerful Pope and the church hierarchy making selfish choices, becoming too powerful, not putting the people first, and worst of all, not putting God first. The leaders of the church left the voice of the people out. They failed to listen, and they certainly had no interest in being servant leaders. They felt that keeping themselves above others was the way to succeed. They were more interested in power than growing the faith of the community. Martin Luther struggled with this and went back to the scriptures. He landed on Paul's early letters to the church where he read about God's grace and mercy and love in response to faith. There he discovered that it wasn't the rules that were put in place by men that would ensure his salvation. It was God's action alone that would accomplish this. Luther was relieved that he no longer had to struggle with whether he was good enough, had done enough, prayed hard or long enough, and he wanted to make sure everyone else knew that as well. So Luther made it his life's work to inform his brothers and sisters of faith. He would translate the scriptures to make them accessible to the common person. He took common tunes and used them to teach the catechism and to share the scriptures. He would turn the liturgy into the work of the people as it should be. What did Martin Luther get for his attempts to reform the church? He got death threats, excommunicated, and ridiculed. He would be taken into hiding for his own safety. Was it worth it? I'm sure Martin Luther might have had a different answer depending on when he was asked. Yet by the end of his life, he had become a respected leader and theologian. Many sought his wisdom and enjoyed sitting at his table to enjoy a beer and his take on scripture and life. Was he a perfect man? Oh, absolutely not. Yet he used his voice to speak out and try to make things better. Unfortunately, the Reformation led to the splitting of the church. Leaders took sides and that community was divided. However, more than 500 years later, there is some ecumenical dialogue taking place Talks between Lutheran and Roman Catholics are working to find a way to lift up and celebrate our similarities and work around our differences. What will be the outcome? Oh Lord, only you know. Yet, 
coming together in the start. Honoring and respecting our shared history is important. Putting aside our personal wants is what's required. Jesus paved the way, modeling discipleship and shared leadership. He pushed aside the old models of ruling by fear and power. There are still areas where the church needs to reform. Work is being done on it, and thankfully, there is nowhere near the amount of resistance that there was in Luther's day. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for all those past, present, and future who work to reform your church. Help us to recognize that the root of our faith is in you. Guide us to work together for the welfare of our community, both inside and outside these walls. Amen.
So I can work with all mediators and anyone who works to negotiate peace between parties in conflict. God of justice. Mercy Send your healing grace upon all who experience strife, trauma, addiction, illness, or loss, especially Annie, Marge, Wayne, Diana, Melissa, Jennifer, Denise, Gladys, the Seitman family, Judy, Peter, Kimberly, Cindy, Michael, <coughs> Gloria, Sybil, Mike, Chris, Sam, Pauline, Timothy, Judy, Rich, Andrew, Deb, Pat, Ron, Pastor Rebecca, John, Tara, Kathy, Martha, and those we name silently or aloud. God of justice. In your mercy, your prayer. We thank you for those whose written words stir our emotions, give us respite from our often challenging realities, and open our minds to possibilities. Lend your creativity to all writers that we might be inspired in new ways each day. God of justice. In your mercy, your prayer. Stir up in us the memory of those saints who persisted through divisions and strife in the church for the sake of the gospel. God of justice. In mercy, your prayer. Merciful God, we turn all these things over to your tender care, trusting that you hear and answer all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed our duty and joy that we should in all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace.
However, as, as you know, it's very cumbersome to keep referring to that. So we came up with the temporary name of Tribal Lutheran Collaborative. But that's like not a church name. That was just kind of an organization name. So now we want to pick a name uh, that has church in it that will be more representative of who we are coming together because we want to um, make sure we can have a social media presence and we want to put up signs and we want to be visible in the community but we need a name. So starting next week and for three weeks there will be ballots um, in the narthex as you come in, one vote per person um, to select a name. And there will also be representatives from the collaboration leadership table here uh, to take any questions, talk with you, anything that you want to know that you think you need to know for that. So please um, keep that in mind. Also next week, we have a very special visitor. We have Bishop Paul Eggensteiner, our Bishop of our Synod, will be with us to celebrate All Saints Day and the 90th anniversary celebration of Gloria Day. So it will be a wonderful celebration uh, with him with us, so please join us for that. Um, out on the table as you leave are two lists uh, for All Saints Day. One is for the people that have died in this past year, and they don't have to be necessarily members of our three congregations. They could be someone in your family or a friend. The other list is for someone that may have died in past years, however you would still like to honor and remember. Um, so one list will be mentioned in um, worship, and the list of those that have gone in the past will be in a bulletin insert. That's not clear, please talk to me later. Um, there's a sign out there, so um, we want to um, honor everyone, all of our cloud of great witnesses that have gone before us. Uh, so please help us do that. Um, what else? We did, we did make our challenge. We doubled our challenge for Friday. So thank you. So generous. We uh, really appreciate it and our community appreciates it. Uh, because all of those canned goods and boxes went to uh, Helping Hands and to Joseph's Storehouse. So uh, they're probably gone by now out into the community. So thank you for that. Uh, on Saturday, this Saturday coming up, November 4th, there will be a celebration of life for Jenny Bacchus. She was a beloved member of Gloria Day for many, 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 many years. Um, involved in a lot. I'm sorry? And choir. And choir, and liturgical dance, and group circle. And she was involved in a lot, a lot of things. She was in our Bible study. She was known to many. So there will be a celebration of her life. The details are in the uh, bulletin. Uh, so please pray for her family um, as they go through this week. Are there any other announcements? Okay, then I would ask our confirmation students and their family to get your bulletin inserts ready to bring up with you and to come up when I call your name. If your friends were gathered today to enroll those who have been called by God's Spirit to inquire into the Christian faith in this congregation. Together, let us welcome them to this journey of faith in Jesus Christ. I invite, I invite the sponsors and the students to come forward as I call their names. Lila, Ethan, Alex, Danny, Chris, Lucas, Madison, and Lila. I invite you to join with this assembly to hear the word of God, 
Will you be faithful in learning the way of Christ? Sponsors, will you join with this assembly to hear the word of God? Will you be faithful in your support of these students as they learn the way of Christ? All of you, the congregations here assembled, are called to welcome and support these candidates and their sponsors. Will you help them hear the gospel of Christ and come into the household of faith? We will, and we ask God to help us. Let us pray. Merciful God, we give thanks for these, your servants, whom you have sought and summoned in many ways. You have called them today, and they have answered you in our presence. We praise you, O oh God, and we bless you. We praise you, O oh God, and we bless you. You will hear the holy and saving gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now receive the sign of that gospel on your body and in your heart, that you may know the Lord and the power of his resurrection. In response, I'm going to ask you to uh, hear me a little touchy-feely with your children. And when I name a body part, you will draw a cross on it. Receive the cross on your forehead, a sign of God's endless love and mercy for you. Learn to know and follow Christ. Praise to you, o Christ, with the power of God. Receive the cross on your ears, that you may hear the gospel of Christ, the word of life. Praise to you, o Christ, with the power of God. Receive the cross on your eyes that you may see the light of Christ, illumination for your way. Praise to you, O Christ, the wisdom of God. Receive the cross on your lips, that you may sing the praise of Christ, the joy of the church. Praise to you, O Christ, the wisdom of God. Receive the cross on your heart, that God may dwell there by faith. Praise to you, O Christ, the wisdom of God. Receive the cross on your shoulders, that you may bear the gentle yoke of Christ. Praise to you, o Christ, the of the power of God. Receive the cross on your hands, that God's mercy may be known in your work. Praise to you, o Christ, the of the power of God. Receive the cross on your feet, that you may walk in the way of Christ. Praise to you, o Christ, the of the power of God. Let us pray. Merciful and most high God, creator and life giver of all that is, you have called all people from darkness into light, from error into truth, from death into life. We ask that you grant to Lila, Ethan, Alex, Danny, Chris, Lucas, Madison, and Lila, and bless them. Raise them by your spirit, revive them by your word, form them by your hand, bring them to the water of life, and to the bread and cup of blessing, that with all your people they may bear witness to your grace and praise you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I ask the congregation to please rise. <coughs> Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now we want a litany for Reformation Sunday. It's a unique way to uh, work through a mighty fortress is all about. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, for the earth should change, for the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, for its waters roar and fall, for the mountains tremble with the great storm.
behold the works of the Lord. God makes the work cease to the end of the earth. God breaks the bow, shatters the spear, and burns the shields with fire.